Welcome back. Uh, to, right now, we're getting ready to talk to uh, Burgess Wicker, getting ready to fight Wazik Al Hassan coming up in Bellator 137, May 15th in Pechenga. It's right by where Virgil's training. It's right, you know, right there in, the, in uh, his hometown. So it makes it a, a simple travel, but you just got back from training camp in Hawaii, right? Yeah, I went, I went out there for, uh, I've been kind of um, two, three weeks already in camp and then uh, it's kind of kind of funny story. In November, I had scheduled a Hawaii trip for the family on vacation, and I had to postpone it. So I postponed it for April. So when they had called and told me that I was going to be fighting, I couldn't I couldn't do that to the family. So we went out there, and then I just hit up some of the you know some of the boys out there, so Clint and Corey Daniel and yeah. uh, Brandon Wolf, and went over to their, their their gym and got some good some good working over there. Yeah, I, uh, I've actually known uh, Clint for about a year and a half or so, and then and Brandon, I've known shoot almost twenty years. Um, yeah, yeah and whenever I'm on the, whenever I'm on the island, I go out there and that's where I train with when, when I'm there. That's, he said he was going to call you and let you know, uh, you know, when are you coming back? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's got a, he's always yelling at me to get back. He wants, he would prefer to have me there every ninety days, and I would prefer to actually be there every ninety days. You know? Right, um, ah, that's uh, that's what I was saying. I was just like, well, I'll be back soon. <laughs> you know, I interviewed Ryan Couture before his last fight, and he actually had just come off his honeymoon. Um, he postponed his honeymoon, got a fight later, went. On his honeymoon, because already scheduled, went you know went and did a bunch in Europe, came back and, and still had a great fight. Sometimes those vacations tend to with fam- when it's family vacation, not just personal vacation, but family vacation tend to to re-energize the an athlete. You know, get them way back in the, in the sequence. Did you feel like that coming back from this from this one? That was that was my whole mentality going into this. In this, um, you know, I let my manager, uh, I let Bellator know, let everybody know because my whole focus was to make sure that I, I get every opportunity to shine in this fight, not only this fight, but in this training camp. And um, my whole goal was just to go out there, get my mind right, get my mind ready for war, get my, you know, get my, my time away from everybody with my family, also get work in and, and enjoy Hawaii like everybody should. So um, I, I, I seized every opportunity to, to have those quiet moments, you know, got a lot of hard work in there. At the same time, you know, got to swim with some whales and dolphins and, and you know, uh, enjoy, enjoy the beach out there and that water, man. I mean, I, I loved it. I loved it. I had every, you know, my whole focus was to make sure mentally, that's what my, my whole goal was going out there was to get my mind focused for this fight. Where, where did you stay when you're in Oahu? Uh, Koalina. Okay. All right. And Koalina, I got a, a timeshare out there. That yeah, I, it's a little, little less, it's touristy, but not super touristy. So it's not, you know, not going to have, you know, spring breakers running up and down the hallway, you know, at, at two in the morning, keeping you up and keeping the kids up and all that. So it was, it was actually a pretty nice spot, but you still had to fight that that Hawaii traffic to get over to Brandon's place. You know, getting over to HQ takes a little bit. Did it take about about forty five minutes, half hour, forty five minutes? 30, 45 minutes, exactly, yeah. exactly. And and uh, it was actually great. The the where where I was at in my in the timeshare place that I have, uh, there was that lot tournament golf champion, the ladies championship going on. So yeah, it, it was it was awesome to to get to see some of these athletes. There wasn't at all touristy, which was good because I was able to still you know have those times set away from my family and at the same time have my training thing and. I was still on on uh, my time zone, so I was waking up four thirty five o'clock over there and hitting the gym really hard. And uh, uh, it was it was definitely good for me to stay on my zone because you know by the time eight nine o'clock that place is going off with with you know people swimming and going you know it gets busier during the day. So um, I, I I seized the opportunity to, to keep my mind and my body zoned into my time zone so I could so I could do that. But yeah, I definitely hit that traffic every blue one. It's crazy, huh? Yeah, yeah, it's it's worse than LA actually. It's it's amazing when you get out there. And everybody you know the highest speed they're going is freaking sixty miles an hour over here, you know, we're eighty, yeah, they, ninety it's miles. It's funny because there there's the maximum speed limit I think is sixty miles an hour. Yeah. And a lot of times you're on the freeway and you're happy as hell if you can just hit hit maximum speed. Right. I'm, I'm right, doing sixty, exactly. I'm doing great because most of the times it's even in you know, a lot of times, late at night even, it's still traffic. And yeah, it's you're bad. Stuck. And it's, I, I was kind of blown away. That, that was the first time I've been in Oahu. So I was definitely uh, tripped out that uh, the traffic was so bad over there. Well, let's talk about uh, Al-Hassan we got coming up here next. You've had, your last three fights have been really tough. You lost to Vassal. You had a draw with Alexander. And he beat Alexander in a narrow, thin uh, split decision. So it's like... You haven't had an easy fight your last three fights. Every train camp, you've had to get tougher and tougher and go harder and harder because you knew what was coming up next. What was this train camp like getting ready for Al Hassan? Was it was it the same as it was trying to get ready for Alexander the second time, or has it changed again? No, there for this one, um, they gave me a little bit more. You know, I, I, I definitely was going with this one, and I'm still right in the middle of camping. Also, I got a good. I'm starting to you know 
peak and get everything going. My my striking coach just got back in town from Belgium, so um, I'm definitely mentally focused, really on on stride right now. Uh, I just got to you know fine tune some some techniques, and I just want to have fun. You know, I, I know uh, Razak is definitely coming off uh, of a two year layout, but that's for me that's two years of hard work he's been putting in the gym. I, I don't know what his why he stepped away for so long, but uh, um, my whole goal is going there, have a lot of fun. It's in my back town, my, my hometown, uh, not my hometown, but you know, where I live in Temecula. And, um, I just, I want to put on a show for my, for my cousins, my family, my friends and all the fans out there. Cause that's one thing that I, I definitely want to take away from every fight, no matter what it is, is going in there, putting on a great show, having fun and, and do what I do, what I love to do, which is fight. And, and, and hopefully, you know, it'll go my way, which I, I pretty much plan, plan it to be. Very, very uh, determined to get this this win. You know, I got a lot of good momentum going forward with the last three fights. Even though uh, against Linston Vassal, my my mind wasn't where it needed to be. And and uh, he's a tough guy. He's very, very strong. And and I think that I learned a lot from that one. And now I'm just trying to make sure I surround myself with a great camp and great people, and and just keep that momentum going forward. You know, if you look at the photos from the last time that he fought, he was an absolute physical specimen at 205. You know. Big, thick, completely shredded out, you know, like, like and then you look at yours, and you look, you're not as, as shredded, okay, for example, you, you know, you've got a extra belly on. fat, you got a little, you, you, you know, you're, you're carrying around a little, you know, an extra little tissue running around the shoulders, so you look a little softer, but, <clears throat> so the media grabs onto that, and they're going, well, look at this, this specimen versus this guy that's not, but this guy that's a specimen hasn't been in, you know, we haven't seen him in two years, so who knows if he still looks the same, he could come in fat as all hell, but we can only go off what we saw last time. So now you have the situation of a guy that's that's got momentum, that's been training, that's got, you know, uh, a lot of a lot of heart determination over his last three fights, really coming through. So a guy that's been off for two years, but looks the part of the guy that's been fighting for a while. Versus you don't look the part that that most Americans think of of how a fighter should look. But you've been putting the time and putting the work in because you've been you fought. We see it. We can see it. You know, on Spike TV, we've watched it on Spike TV. We've seen these things happen. Does that sometimes frustrate you that that when you come in that it, it becomes so superficial that it becomes more about the look of how you look rather than how you actually perform sometimes. Even I know it happens a lot with the women, but it's now starting to happen a lot more with, with the men that they're that the, 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 the casual fan. And then of course, a lot of journalists are grabbing onto that because it's going to get their article read more is by, is by putting that sensationalism out there. Does that frustrate you at all? Like, look, I'm putting work in. This is just what I look like. And you guys can't, can't go off my body type. Yeah, that's that's pretty much. It. I'm, I'm from the reservation, so I was born and raised off of Kamad and government food. So uh, I, I love. I also love food. You know, I, I'm. I'm a. I always tell my family that I'm, I'm USA D, USDA approved, which is straight commodity can. You know, and I love that. I love my. I don't. I'm. I'm a confident person. You know, yeah. when it comes to my body figure, I I could care less. When I get down to 205, when I start peaking two three weeks, I'll you know my little muscles start pumping out, but that doesn't mean nothing to me. I know. Most of these guys that are in there are that are specimens have to put that extra work because they ain't got the heart. They ain't got the strength, the strength and the mind of a fighter like I am. I'm a natural born scrapper. You know, I mean, I was that's who I am. It's in my blood. It was, I was born that way. Uh, I don't need to go in the gym and lift weights and try to get the, the six packs and stuff like that. I just have it mentally and in my heart that I know I'm a great fighter. Um, I put all the work in, in the gym that it needs to be done for the most part. I mean, and of course, I know I'm more hard on myself, but I know my coaches is just as hard that. I know how far my potential can be if I really do set aside more time to do what I want to do more. But, you know, I'm also a family man. I'm also a coach. I, I have so many things going on that I don't want to step away from along with my professional group because it's just who I am. And uh, I, I could care less what people think, you know, about the body types. Hey, those that have muscle usually gas up quicker too, you know. So yep. uh, um, he's definitely a, a big boy. I've actually I've had some time to train with him before, uh, like a couple of years ago when he came to visit uh, Sokaju in the gym. Mm -hmm. And uh, he he was he was intimidating look, and uh, I, I'm confident in my skills. I'm confident in my my, my fighting style, and I, and I think I'll be victorious on this one just because of my mind and, and, and my heart. You know, I'm not I'm not I don't care how tough and ripped up you look. Can you chin take my shots? Can you can you right. keep my relentless pressure? Can you keep right. me from from getting up and not giving up? And you hit me with every hand, and I'm still in your face. Can, can you handle that? Like, I, I don't know if he's going to be able to. I, I don't know him like that, but. I know who I am. And one thing I've always told myself and I really believe in myself is, is you know, I know who I am. I'm very, very calm. I'm a confident individual. I'm proud. Of, I'm a proud Native American. I'm proud res dog. I always make sure mentally in my heart, I'm doing it for the right reasons and I'm not doing it for anything else besides for myself and for my family. It's always been my, my assumption, not my assumption, but my, my opinion that 
somebody takes time off, you, you take that time off from, from actual live competition, no matter how much time you spend in the gym, it's not the same. You, you can, you're in there spending, doing the reps, doing the time, but you're not in that heat of competition. The lights are on, pressure's on you. You know, and that's going to be the deciding factor for me in this in this thing, is that is that you are mentally strong because you're a mentally strong character. That's just who you are as a man. Um, Hassan, I haven't seen him show me that mental toughness. When it got when it got heavy and hard back in 2011 against Houston Alexander, he, he kind of pulled it up a little bit. Uh, when it got heavy and hard against Dwayne Lewis back in 2010, he folded up a little bit. And those were his last two losses. And then he got a win uh, in 2000. You know, he had like a year break between 11 and, and, and uh, 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 let's see, he fought August of 2011. He didn't fight again until March of 2013. And that's when he got his last win. And he hasn't fought again since 2013 till till he fights you on, on, in May. So it's been, he has these long period of layoffs. That he comes in, comes in and comes after. And I don't know what his situation is. I don't know if it's if it's financial, if it's family oriented. Injuries, I, I, that's, that, that was the whole thing where I, I was kind of just like, you guys want me to fight this guy? Like, I, I know he just recently signed with Bellator. Yeah. I was expecting somebody, you know, a little bit more, you know, that's going to keep me moving forward. And, and I mean, I, not, not to take anything. That was my next talk. question. This is kind of a step back for you. Step down, depending on how you look at the rankings. It really is because not, that's not what I, that's what I kinda, to him because he just hasn't fought that much lately. And it's, it's, it's kind of ruining your momentum. I, to be honest with you, when he announced it, I was kind of surprised that you said yes to this. I, you know, my, my, uh, at the time I want to fight, I, like I, I, uh, the last Houston fight, I cracked my thumb, uh, in the second yeah. round, I cracked my thumb. So, uh, it was straight down the middle. I was doing therapy, doing everything I had to do to get back. As soon as I got cleared, I let them know. And they said, well, listen, we're going to be, you know, they definitely, Belter definitely, uh, I have a beautiful opportunity where I'm at fighting at Pechanga because of my home, what I bring with all the natives that come and all, it's being in my hometown. So I, I always like to do that and fight here. <clears throat> I really don't, but I mean, I do because yeah. It's easy for me, but at the same time, sometimes when it is a tough fight like Linson Vassell, I was definitely, uh, <clears throat> I, I kind of think I, I lost myself before the fight, even because of the pressure I put on myself. Uh, the Houston fight this, in my hometown, I was so happy. I was so pumped up and loved it because of the rematch. Houston Alexander in my hometown, everything that built off of it for me, taking a short notice, I had a full camp. And um, <clears throat> Houston's a tough son of a gun, man. I could not put him away for the life of me. I hit him with some shots and... Um, I was expecting to have somebody up on the thing to myself. I, I definitely was expecting to have a, a tougher, bigger name, but, uh, I'm happy to fight, man. I can't really complain about anything. You know, it's, it's all about, it's all about getting in there and put on a show and, and they're giving me an opportunity to hopefully, you know, put this guy out. And, and, and I, if I go in there and I do what I need to do and maybe hopefully get a good finish this time, then maybe the next fight will be somebody big, you know? So, uh, um, I can't really complain, you know, I'm, I'm fighting, yeah. you know, m m most people don't have that that blessing to be able to use their home statue to build off of, on a big show. And, and uh, yeah, I definitely like, I definitely like the, the new crew with Belcher, man. They are so, so awesome. Right. Yeah. And, and, yeah. And, and it just makes me, it makes me want to fight. It makes me feel happy to fight for them. So uh, before I've had my controversies with, with, with Belcher, now, now I'm, I'm, I'm all aboard. I'm, I'm, I'm big time on Bellator and, and I love the new direction that they're going in. I love their, their, the way they treat us. And, and um, mm -hmm. that's one of the things why it was so easy for me to say yes. It didn't matter about the opponent. It matters about me and what I do. And that does, it is, a, you know, we, we talk about, you know, trying to move forward and, and trying to make as much money as possible in your career because our athletic windows are very, very short. When it's over, it's over. And there's nothing you can do about it. You can, you can try to hold on as long as you want, but when it's over, it's closed. It's just done. And it, it does go a long way to your character as a man saying that, look, you know, Bellator, I'm happy with Bellator. They're taking care of me. All right, I'm going to go ahead and take care of them. They asked me to fight this guy. It's, it, it's obviously a, a, just on paper, we're not saying this fight's, I'm not saying this fight's going to be easy. I'm not saying just, you know, shut down your train camp and, and show up in, in, in three weeks and you'll be fine. What yeah, I'm saying is that, that on paper, this is a step back for you in competition. After these, these wins that you're getting on, it's when you're getting on it. It surprised me that you were like, yeah, yes, I'm taking it. I was like, this doesn't make any sense to me. Like, I would have personally, but of course now I'm, I'm also not in your home. I'm not with your family. I'm not in your in your body. I'm in my own body going, you know, at, at my age going, you know what? Like every fight to me has got to be an important fight. Otherwise, it's useless. And I'm not building up anything anymore. My That time for me is over. So I'm using that mentality of that fight. You know, you should you should have, you know, told him, no, I need a different opponent. But also to say this fight goes, it's a it's a three a three round war. And it's Friday the night, and you get come victorious out of this out of this war. It's still going to bring bring your credit up even higher. It's still going to bring your rankings up even higher. So th this is still a win win for you. Just my opinion was wh why take the fight? You know, because it's such a far step back for you. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And me and my management and my team, my coaches, we all we all went through that same thing. And 
they uh we all talked about the same exact thing we those great points that you just brought up but you know we're in the fight game i can't pick and choose i'm not i'm not out i'm not out here to do any of that uh you said it yourself you know the window of, of fighting it comes and goes and i'm not getting any younger so uh the busier i could be the more happy i'm going to be and, and the more more you know focused and and grounded that i'll be because i know I have to be in the gym. I have to. I have to be the best I can be, regardless of whoever it is or whatever their style is or whatever they do. And for me, I really don't know too much about Razak. The days he we did spend in the gym, it wasn't. It wasn't something like we were. I wasn't watching him. I'm, I'm knowing, you know, like the only fight I really watched of him was when he fought Steve Cantwell, and, oh, yeah. uh, in the UFC. And and you know, he showed some definitely some heart to heart right there when he's getting armbarred. But I mean, my, my point is, I could care less. I'm busy. Uh, it's, I'm doing what I'm doing. I don't care about the money. I don't care about the fame. I care about keeping my schedule, my structure, my, my, you know, I, first and foremost, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a coach with the youth out here, with football, basketball. So I always want to make sure that they see something on the reservation, that they see somebody and something that's doing something with themselves instead yeah. of just hanging out and fighting and trying to take pictures and be glamorous. I could care less. I, I, I want to be able to go in there, stay busy, getting paid the same regardless of who it is, you know? So, yeah. um, I got to show up. I got to put him out, and and I'm I'm hoping that this is going to be the opportunity for me to finally get a finish. Besides uh, my first fight with Bellator, you know, uh, I want I want to put on a good show, home crowd, and make him you know make him get those those you know those cobwebs right back in his head after I crack him a couple times. So nice, nice. But um, I like you, man. Thanks so much for coming on here. That's that's uh, uh I, I love your attitude. I love talking to you every time because you are such a uh, a confident person without being cocky. And I, I get a lot of confident people on here that are cocky. And you kind of got to work with it and just work around it with you. You're, it's, you're still very humble in your, in your stature. It's, it's great. It's like talking to you and interviewing you is like, for me, it's like interviewing Tyron Woodley. He's got a lot of confidence. He's very confident in what he does, but he's still such a humble man. And it, for me, it's, it's great, you know, seeing guys like that that are still fighting in the game and, and still and starting to crack heads. And I think this fight's going to be a great fight, and it's up to you. You can make it a showcase. You can make it great for your cousins and your family in town, or you can completely shit the bed and make this whole thing fall apart. And the choice is just up to you. And, and that's why I wake up early. That's why I get to the grind really early. Because it don't matter who it is. Every man, every man, every champion, everybody who's been called the baddest man on the planet has been beat. And, and for me, I don't care. Anybody that steps in the ring with me is going to know they're going to be in a fight. They're going to be in a dog war. They're not just going to freaking walk all over me or beat me. Right. And, and, and most importantly for me, it's my tradition, my culture, who I am and what I stand for. And, and I'll always be humble. I'll always be, you know, on the cocky people that I I can't stand those kind of people, you know, and, and, and I'm not a, I'm not a quiet man when I'm around them. So I'm always quick to make sure I call somebody on, on if it bothers me, I'm going to let you know. And, and that's where a lot of people are kind of, you know, I'm from the old school, you know, and, and people don't really realize how hard and rough I had it, but also how the morals, the teachings, the things that I got and that are instilled in me, I'll never change. I'll never stop being me, Virgil, you know, and, and that's, that's one thing where I got to, maintain myself mentally physically and make sure spiritually that i'm in the right place and that i don't get myself set up for failure outside of the ring or even inside the ring because you know we are i i am i am just always just so passionate with my son my daughter to make sure that they have that confidence to look people in the eye make sure you give them the utmost respect whether you know them or not and if they cross that line you make sure they know it you know and uh when it comes to fighting i'm the same way you know i love all my teammates i'm, I'm there for all my coaches my friends my family but you, you, you step on that side of the line, you'll see a whole different Virgil Zwicker, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, we've talked about that before privately. Yeah, I, I agree with yeah. you. Yeah. All right, Virgil, uh, thanks so much for... I'm sorry, go thank ahead. You, thank you, Frank, again, man. I appreciate it, brother. Like I said, I look forward to seeing you again, and uh, definitely we'll, we'll we'll look forward to another interview because uh, I, I will be back. I like it. Thanks, Virgil, man. Have a great rest of the day. We'll talk to you later. You, talk, you too, Frank. Take care, brother. God bless.